Itka Morris, or E. W. Morris, either one you might have put it down. Okay, and and uh, age how old are you? seventy-six. And how long? Been, been cooking chicken model fifty-four years. Didn't have been cook. Well, you know, I've heard that you're the best chicken model cooker in Greensville County. Well, I can do the as good as any of them. I, put, I don't <laughs> brag on myself at all. You're probably one of the best in the state, aren't you? Well, uh, the way I learned that back on the 50 some years ago was helping older men that know how to cook it then down in Zion District where I was raised at. Uh-huh. See, about eight miles south of here. And I'd help them cook, stir, and watch them. Away. And I got the idea that if you want to know the truth, I've improved it a whole lot just in myself. Okay. See, you're different from different from what they did. Okay. Well, say say I wanted to fix a whole big big pot of chicken muddle. Well, what, how do I start? What do I do first? Uh, well, the first thing you do now, if you want to, you cook it by quarts. If you want to cook 50 quarts, get your 50 pound of or, or hens. See what I mean? Okay. Then uh, that totals up 10. 10 hens the way I way you see you go by weight you get uh, and you want a, a quarter model quarter butter beans I mean a quarter tomatoes quarter butter beans and a quarter corn to each hen see five pounds per hen see what I mean how many yeah, yeah. and uh, well, what kind of corn and what kind of uh, crushed, corn. crushed corn pardon me crushed corn you crushed, know crushed corn crushed corn you buy it in and cans, you you, uh, you can buy whole grain or you can buy crush. Okay. See what I mean? Any special brand better than the others? Well, well, no, I wouldn't think so. And uh, <clears throat> you use fresh vegetables or canned vegetables in your? I buy all canned. These are fresh vegetables don't don't do. Go to the store and buy it all. Okay. Buy it in gallon cans. Okay. You buy, and the main thing is your butter beans. If you can get them, get the what they call the wigwam butter bean. They're bigger and makes a better filler for your model. You understand them little bitty green beans? You couldn't cook them done to save your life. Hell, they'd be swelled up in there when you get ready to eat it. And I don't like to eat model and get a butter bean in my mouth. Huh? Yeah. I want it cooked. Right. And uh, that much, you'd uh, get about 10 pounds of iced potatoes and peel them and chop them up and put them in there. See what I mean? Okay. And uh, so you cook the the potatoes before you put. No, them in? just when you put your chicken on, when you put your chicken on, have them potatoes ready and have your onions ready, and dump it all right in there. You see now? Okay, let's let's start it out. Okay, let's start off. I got a big black pot in my yard, and I got I got firewood under it. Yeah. And now I'm gonna put. Say I'm gonna I'm gonna cook uh, 50 quarts of uh, yeah. chicken muddle. Yeah. What do I need? You need uh, 50 pounds of hen. Okay. What do I do first with the hen? Put, like, put put your water on and get and, and uh, put, put it there. in the pot. Put the water in the pot enough to cover them chickens when you put the chickens in there. Okay. All right. Uh, you see, when you get your chickens from the store, they'll cut them up for you. Okay. See what I mean? Then you uh, put your uh, <clears throat> put your butter beans, corn, and uh, you get your uh, well 50 pounds. Get your boot five or six pounds of good smoke meat and dice it up and fry it in a pan real brown and pour the whole business right in that grease and all. Okay. See, don't to stick. Okay. Then you, you see you got your corn, butter, beans, and tomatoes and your potatoes, onions. Now, for that many hens, you'd, uh, you'd want to put 15 pounds of onions and cut it. See, time you peel them, you'd have a plenty. You peel them and chop them up? Peel them and uh, and just just block, block them up so they won't stick beside that pot. Okay. And uh, uh, just block them up and drop them right in there as soon as you put your chicken on. You can put your beans and you, you uh, put your beans, onions, and uh, sure. your chicken and, uh, and you, you fry your bacon quick as you can put in there so it won't stick at the bottom, you see. Okay. See that bacon keeps it from sticking, and you can get you uh, a little can or two of this what they call pepper rigatoni. It's, it's nothing but what you might call cake flavor. It puts the best 
flavor to it you've ever seen. That's something I started adding to it myself. Paprika. Paprika. How much of that put in it? Oh, they, they come in little cans about that. Fifty quarts, you'd get you about two or three, not over three, and put in there. Then you can add your... Uh, what about the bones in the chicken? Well, when that model get done, them bones will set up. You pick them out. I got I got tongs to pick them out with. All the bones will cook out of the chicken? If you cook it, the meat will come off the bone. Now, I don't like uh, cooking no chicken model and pressure cook the chicken and get the bones and put in there, it tastes flat. Yeah. You want the real, now the, the flavor of that bone and the marrow in that bone, the cooking it makes that model taste good. All right. But when you take the damn bone out there, you done play hell with it. Yeah. Let it cook in there and then take the, see them bones will set up. And you, you can you can stir with a little until you get your stick to stir it. You can stir and then bones will end up will come up just like this and you pick them out with you get a little tongs, you know, about that long. Pick them out. How if do you, you keep the bugs and stuff from getting in there while you're What? You just have to have somebody stand around there and keep them away, huh? What bugs? Bugs and flies. Yeah, if you got a fire with wood, ain't that damn bug coming around you. No, ain't that bug coming around you. No, that fire, that heat of that fire will keep him away. Okay, and how long do you cook it? Well, <clears throat> it'll take, uh, it depends on how tough your chicken is now, that's the question. Well, so, do you taste it to, to see I if it's done? It, I, I taste it for seasoning. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when that... You put uh, a lot of salt and pepper in it? Huh? You put a lot of salt and pepper in it? Well, I... I put them there and taste, if it ain't much as I want, I put a little more until I get the right taste. Don't put, now a model with too much salt in it is the damnedest taste you have ever tasted. Yeah. And you don't want to get it too hot with pepper. You use red and black pepper and salt, and that's about it. You see, listen now, chicken, onions, uh, butter beans, tomatoes, corn, your, your bacon, and your salt, and pepper, and your paprika. There yeah. you go. And that's it? That's it. That's it. That's it. What do you say is the average time it takes you to cook it? Oh, uh, well, around three and a half hours, or sometimes it's, uh, I have had it take four hours, depending on how long it takes the chicken to cook it. Come off the bone. I've cooked it in them bones just as clean as your finger. And you pick them up right pick, out of the muddle? Pick them up when the muddle, when you, when the muddle, after the muddle get done and get, you let it cool, you stir it till it cools. You let the fire go out there? Yeah, right? let, pull the fire out and run water under the pot to, to kill the heat where it's there. Of course, when you pull the fire up, you just walk off and leave it till it sticks until you stir it while it's mm -hmm. sticking there. There's one thing you got to do all the time, huh? Keep stirring. It. Oh well, not too fast. You you just take your stick. Just like that, right around the pot, and keep that stick on the bottom. Okay, because if you don't keep it on the bottom, it's you don't gonna... you don't turn the bottom, and that's where it sticks. Uh -huh. uh, see what I mean? Right. Yeah. So you 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 got it all now. You got it, you got it taped there, ain't you? That's right. Yeah, well, you do that and you cook a good model. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to give it my best shot. That's right. Mr. Morris, you're a good man. Well, I, I sure appreciate it. You know, and if I, if man, I, if the man I cook come some in, good model, I'm going to write you a letter and tell you about it. Yeah, uh, the man come in yesterday morning me to tell him what to get to cook a model. Really? Like, sir, <clears throat> all, everybody all over the country and everywhere come, they want to see you at your Morris. Let them tell them how to cook a model. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I've been cooking them a long time and had a lot of exper experience with what you, what you need. Now, I can tell you something else. You can buy the same ingredients, chickens and everything, cook a model today, <clears throat> turn around and buy the same amount tomorrow, and there'll be a little difference in the taste of it. You can't cook them all as big. Of course, they're all good eatable, but you, you can, I can't. I can tell a little difference in it. Well, what's the difference between chicken muddle and brunt stew? Oh, brunt stew is just soupy. Yeah. You want to cook that muddle so she get out thick. Yeah. You, well, how, how do you 
How much uh, water do you put in it? Put enough water to start off with to cover the chicken good. Do you ever add That's, water? You know, sometimes. You can tell when you need water in there by how thick it gets to start off with. Yeah. Well, you see, your, your butter beans have got liquid to it. Your tomatoes got it. Well, what kind of tomatoes now? Oh, uh, well, I buy these canned tomatoes. There's just whole tomatoes in the in the can, you know, yeah. and put them in there. I, I I'd rather have that than have tomatoes. It's like you stew them, you know. You can buy them right. like that. Right. I rather have a whole tomato. Okay. Yeah. Rather... You ever you ever cook squirrel muddle? Oh yeah. Now if you want a good squirrel muddle, get you about 25 or 30 squirrels and a couple of chicken hens, and put in there that that, that chicken pulls that wild taste out of that squirrel. Now, that's the best muddle that's ever been cooked. That's better, that's better than chicken muddle? Uh, to me it is. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's better It's better to me than, uh, than chicken muddle. Well, you're eating chicken, in, uh, but you don't taste chicken. Just you, taste just, just put, uh, you got 25 squirrels, get you two hens and put in there. And uh, you, you, uh, you, you got it made. And cook it just like you would the real chicken muddle. Same amount of water and everything. Well, you put you put your water in there enough to cover the squirrels and the chicken you put in there. Okay. You put your uh, put your onions and your corn, butter, beans, tomatoes, and all the uh, ingredients in that just like you would a chicken muddle. Okay. See? Once again, for every hen you put in there, you put in how much? How many tomatoes? A quarter uh, of tomatoes. A hen weighs five pounds. You ought to have as much as a, a quarter of tomatoes. A quarter uh, corn, quarter uh, butter beans. It was. I tell you what, now you can step up on the butter beans some and cut back on the corn a little bit. See, that's the way I cook it. Okay. See, it, it don't really need the corn as much as you do the tomatoes and uh, and butter beans. But the okay. the old recipe, the way the folks used to cook them, uh, they used a quart quart like that, but uh, it didn't taste like mine. Uh, how I many cook. how many potatoes now? Uh, what, for 50 pounds? Yeah. Uh, about... For 50 quarts? About 10 pounds. Of course, when you peel them, you ain't got that much. Yeah. So you get the peeling on. You slice them up in little Just pieces? Just block them up in pieces that big, so it won't stick to the side of the pot. Okay. If you slice them like you're going to fry them, it might stick to the side of the pot. Have it in blocks. Okay. You take that uh, round potato when you go, split it this way, Put it this way and let that be. Drop it right in the pot. Wash it and drop it in the pot. Yeah, you got it made. Okay, you think you think after what you've told me here, I can fix a good model, huh? If you do what I tell you, you'll do it. And you can tell when that model get done. When that model get done, stop the stick just a little bit, and you see it. Little bubbles and pu and little puddles come up in there. You know about that big around. Kind of bored, blah, 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 like that, and, and to sh it'll show you. Now that's funny. It don't do it till that muddle get done. You see it come up in, in, in little circles, about that big, in the pot. Well, that muddle is done. Any special kind of stick you use to stir it? Oh, uh, you get a stick with with some prongs on it. Oh yeah, because you got to try to scrape the bottom of the Yeah. Time. Oh, you can get you a, a old piece of. Uh, lumber, and you stir it with it. I got an oak paddle I stir sometimes with. Then the oak sticks, I mean, uh, hardwood sticks, you know, don't put no pine in there now. Yeah, you always cook it in a big black pot, huh? Yeah, I got the big black pot sitting around the corner, 80 gallons. And that's how much you normally cook, 80 gallons? Uh, well, no, it don't. You, you, uh, well, 150 quarts would be, uh, would be around 40, 40 gallons, 30, 38 or 40 gallons, you see, by, but I go by quarts. You see, 100 quarts would be uh, 25 gallons. You see, four gallons, four quarts to a gallon. Mm -hmm. You know that, they would be 10. Right, right. Yeah. Then uh, 50 would be uh, 12 or 13, you see, about 36, 7 gallons. No, you couldn't, uh, 80 gallon pot, no way you cook 80 gallons in it, because when it starts off, it's a whole lot more than it is when it gets done. It gets right. done till it settles down. See what I mean? Right. 
Yeah, I got a nice little 20-gallon pot sitting around there. I cook a little more for the family sometime. 20-gallon pot. Can we take a look at your pot? Yeah. Y'all, the 20-gallon pot behind them snow benches, see? See the 20-gallon? Okay. Now, let me, let me show you. Now, this is 80-gallon over here? Yeah. prongs on the end of those. Take a look at this little 20 gallon pot around here. Right. Where can a guy find one of these? See that? That little 20 gallon pot. Right. I've never seen one that small. Where can a person find one? Something like that. They're yeah, hard to find. Are they? Yeah. When I bought that pot back in duration of World War II, million dollars. And ten years ago, that dang pot would cost you seventy seventy five dollars. That's right, cost you seventy seventy five dollars. That's the way it went up in from the duration of the war. Yeah, yeah, here's a. Till I get ready, and then I started washing and cleaning. Mm -hmm. And when I get ready to cook, watch, watch, so you know what you said. Uh, it, that, that pot will shine when I get ready to cook. I don't want no damn nasty pot. Hey, no. What do you clean it with? Oh, uh, stuff you wash uh, dishes with. Okay. Put in uh, hot water, get hot water and scald it out and wash it out clean. Then get that western oil with a, with a soft rag and grease it good. And uh, see that, that Western oil is what you cook with anyhow. And that don't put no bad taste on it. Mr. Morris, do you, do you like to eat chicken though? Yes, sir. I've seen the time, like I said, I eat a quarter in time, I got it done. But, you know, cooking all that many years, you get so you can't, you don't want to eat as much. You just don't want that much, but you can eat some. I don't think I could ever get tired of your chicken though. <laughs> Well, Best chicken little I ever had, Miss Martin. Thank you very much. I yes, sir. Uh, you well, I'm glad to talk to you about it. Mm -hmm.